Atria was designed as a research facility that explores the relationship between humans and plants and put an emphasis on discovering the full potential of plant development in a microgravity environment. The lunar facility can accommodate six crew members, plans to arrive in 2027 with the goal of constructing an Ultima basis, where the plant research will allow creation of a self-sustainable settlement and help the inhabitants to reach a full nutritional independence from Earth. The location that was chosen is the lunar south pole, due to its potential presence of water, almost always available sunlight, mild temperature differences, diverse terrain and earth visibility. More precisely, the Shackleton Crater Ridge was chosen because it offers best sunlight to darkness ratio and proximity to frozen water inside the crater. Components placed on the lunar surface are Main habitat, greenhouses for food production, solar panels for electrical energy. Water is extracted from the nearby Shackleton Crater and oxygen out of regolith. Landing pad is located 1.5 kilometers away and can be reached with pressurized lunar vehicle. In order to plan in advance and develop a sustainable process, a specific timeline has been set. It describes the operations through a time period of four years and it is divided in three steps. In the year 2025, the infrastructure deployment is planned where initial habitat components are launched to the moon. The robotic assembly of the habitat is predicted to be done before the arrival of astronauts. After landing, the habitat is placed on the lunar surface and inflated. A certain amount of regolith is piled around the habitat. Two airlocks and two greenhouse modules are added and connected, and finally, a layer of regolith is centered around it as a radiation protection. The arrival of six crew members is predicted in the year 2027, and their task is going to be to create a self-sustainable settlement that has full nutritional independency from Earth. The finalization of this goal is expected in the year 2029 in the third phase called Ultima Bassi. The habitat needs to be sturdy, lightweight, and cost-efficient when it comes to developing and launching. That's where the idea of using inflatables came to mind. They are flexible so they can be packaged efficiently. They have high strength to weight ratio on top of being tailorable. It starts with the rigid components, like the cones, the core, and the foldable floor panels. Then comes the inflatable part which inflates after the core takes place on the surface, allowing for everything to unfold and take shape around the atrium in the middle that houses the vertical circulation, leading to a hatch at the top. Regarding the fact that plants play a vital role in the human life, the focus of the research center is to understand how plants behave in microgravity and help to promote the parameters of habitability. LED modules may be put closer to the plants, resulting in consistent light distribution throughout the greenhouse, as they produce less concentrated heat loads than normal lamps, even without water cooling. This guarantees that all plants receive the same amount of light of the same quality, leading to better, more consistent plant quality and more predictable production. The plants are divided into functional, aesthetic and mixed use. The functional plants were chosen according to their nutritional benefits to ensure a balanced diet and at the same time offering a variety of taste. Apart from creating a pleasant environment, one of the other important usages of the aesthetical plants is to use them to increase the habitability and maintain the psychological health with the help of the particular benefit that they offer. In order to create a home, it is necessary to establish a space where people can express their culture and values, which they can do by growing plants and cooking them together. The chosen herbs have the common use across most continents, and this offers a possibility for the crew members to bond with each other by expressing things that they have in common, but in different ways. Algae has the benefit of being able to establish a full ecological cycle in theory. This indicates that 6 liters of algal water, one human produce CO2, some equipment, and sunlight can provide food and oxygen to the human indefinitely. There is a significant amount of water ice found on the moon that could be extracted from the lunar poles and could be used for supplying water needed by the human settlement and produce propellant by performing electrolysis to separate the hydrogen from the oxygen components. The lunar regolith is rich in metals in form of oxides, such as silicon, aluminium, calcium, iron, magnesium and titanium, 
Matter production from the lunar soil is interconnected to oxygen production, which is necessary to sustain human life on Moon. Recycling organic trash on Moon using a method called anaerobic composting which occurs spontaneously in nature, resulting in fertile soil and produces heat which helps during the long lunar nights and methane which is an alternative for energy and fuel. Recycling plastics and metals can be used in 3D printing to print safe items for food and medical use and that way it helps save room and space. The simplified life support system prevents the production and disposal of waste on lunar surface. The closed loop systems are able to reclaim and recycle water and other waste into drinking water, food, oxygen and fuel, reducing the necessary amount of supplies and waste. The demand of habitability in this lunar outpost requires changes to the approaches of today. Following the preliminary constraints of short directions missions, we can face the challenges of long directions and long distance missions. Ability should go hand in hand with performance. The main elements of concern is the living space, individual, micro society, and time. Factors such as psychology, physiology, and environment need to be minted properly.